Welcome to this CRM Entity Forms demonstration by Interface. I am Andy Naylor, Head of Customer Success. We are Bitrix24 Gold Partners, providing implementation, customization, training and support. Today I'm going to show you the importance of the CRM Entity Form and we will cover the requirements for creating your fields, the difference between the CRM entity form in the different entities, such as leads, deals, companies, and contacts, uh, the key features within the fields themselves, and the ability to extend their functionality with the customizations. So the CRM entity form should be the key part to any implementation. So we would always start with looking at what your company needs to store. And that's what you need to store in terms of your data. So this is the first part of any aspect of any project. So what does your company need to collect on every inquiry? So what fields do you need to create in your leads? What fields do you need to create in your sales opportunity, so in your deals, to collect the relevant information so you can close out those sales? And what information do you need to collect about the clients that you're working with? If we just jump into Bitrix, I'll just show you in the CRM settings, and then form and report settings, and then custom fields. So this should be the start point of any implementation you should go through each of the different entities and create your data sets. However, what is really important is that Bitrix obviously comes with some standard fields. So they come with standard fields in leads, in deals, in companies and contacts, quotes and invoices. What I would first of all recommend at the start of any project would be to go into each entity as an administrator, click on the gear icon up at the top, and export leads to CSV. Now, obviously you have to have one lead in there to be able to export, but when you do that export, what you will be able to do is select all deal uh, lead fields in this case. And therefore what you will receive is a template of all the standard fields that exist inside leads. And if you repeat that for deals, and if you repeat that for the other entities, then what you'll get is the standard framework of Bitrix24 and therefore you'll need to uh, address what additional fields you need in each one of those entities. So that's the really important aspect uh, at the start of any implementation. Now once you've, done, you've created those fields, let's have a look at the key differences between the CRM entity forms. In leads, there are two views, new leads and repeat leads. In companies and contacts, you have essentially one CRM entity form. And then in deal pipelines, Bitrix offers the ability to show different fields based on the pipeline that you are in. So I'm in leads at the moment, and what you'll be able to see is that I have a repeat lead. So if I click into Sam Connor, and the CRM entity form is the form on the left hand side here. So what we can see is a range of different information. And this is a repeat lead because we have an existing client that exists in our CRM already linked to this particular lead. If we go to a new lead, what we'll see is a completely different CRM entity form down this left hand side. And that's because this is a brand new lead and we haven't linked it to a contact or a company. In companies and contacts, the CRM entity form is the same on every company that we go in. So this layout down this left hand side is uh, static and whatever company we go in will look the same on the left hand side, but obviously with that company's relevant details. And that's the same with regards to the contacts as well. I'll come into the different form views a little bit later on and how we can customize the uh, conditional aspect of showing different forms. 
In the deal side of the CRM, what we have is a range of different pipelines. So if I click into the sales pipeline, what I'll be able to see is if I click on create a set of fields that is relevant to the sales pipeline. Now, if I go into the another pipeline and let's have a look at finance for business and click on create, what we'll see here is a completely different set of information because the relevance to the fields related to the pipeline that you're in, you can lay out those particular uh, fields relevant on the pipeline that you are in. So for each pipeline that you create, you can go into the uh, CRM entity form on this left hand side, click on select, show the fields, click on here and hide the fields should you wish, and you can create additional sections. If we then go into another pipeline, you can do the same. So each pipeline can have its own layout. So what are the key features within some of the fields? Obviously, you can make fields required. In leads and deals, you can make re uh, fields required by the stage. You can change the visibility of custom fields, so you can only show custom fields to particular users. Uh, and you can also change views on a department or user basis. So if I go into a deal and just have a look at a custom field, so we've got roles here. If I click on the little gear icon to the right hand side, I can click on configure and in deals and exactly the same as in leads, we can make a, ref a field required by stage. What that would mean is that if I go to send NDA, NDNA in this um, deal, for example, and this one's empty, I can click on here and what it's going to ask me is I'm going to need to populate that to, all, to progress that particular deal to that particular stage. What we also have is the ability to show and hide this field based on the user that you are logged in as. So if I click on configure here, you can see renewal date. And what I have is I have make this field visible only to selected users. And that might be key for key financial information or salary information, just highly um, secure data that you only want particular users to see. So if I only wanted Joe to see that field, I could click on that particular option. And when we go into this out of an administrator mode, uh, only Joe would be able to see the renewal date. Finally, we also have the ability to create different sets of views of the CRM entity card. So we click on common view, form view, and at the moment, we're on the standard profile view. And this is the view that every user sees when they go into, in this case, the deal. What I can do, though, is set a new view. So I could call this finance. I could select either user or a department. So again, I'll select Joe and Jack. And then when Joe and Jack come to this particular view in finance, what they might see is additional fields in here that they need to be uh, aware of. So every, everybody else will approach the uh, deal in this case as the common form view. But in terms of Joe and Jack, they will look at this in the finance view and they'll be able to see the fields relevant towards that. So those are some of the key features within the CRM entity card. And then finally, what we have the ability to do on the on-premise system is extend this functionality. So here at Interface, we've developed a field manager and we've also developed conditional fields uh, for displaying views. So if I go into our module for the field manager, what this allows us to do is it allows us to create a set of roles and apply the role to either a user or a department. What we can then do is we can then apply, create these additional rules. And essentially what it does is it extends the functionality of the just allowing fields to be visible to a particular user. What we have is the same thing. We can deny access. We can provide read-only access. We can provide write-only access, and we can make them required. So particularly read-only, this particular module is very good, so people can't edit 
the particular field if they are assigned this role. So we can extend the functionality of the fields in the system. And this is particularly good if you have an enterprise system with multiple divisions because the CRM can be split quite easily using this module. Secondly, what we've done is we've allowed the ability to create conditional type fields uh, within drop downs, for example. So if I select uh, the client type as startups, what will happen is it will display all of the fields required for a startup. Then if I was to select agents private, it would then show all the fields uh, relevant to agents private and so on and so forth. And what the drop down here is linked to is it's linked to all of the different views in here. So we can make fields customizable and conditional using the on-premise. So that's a demonstration of the CRM entity card. Thank you very much for watching. Please get in touch for a full demonstration or to find out more about this uh, type of solution and other solutions, go to interface.com forward slash solutions. Thank you and bye for now.